in the RC. So it's not it's not yet released. It's not here. Um, there's a, a much you know a much earlier design <clears throat> in the current release. But let's just go through what the what the latest and greatest is. Um, and some stuff that I'll show you here I've actually been uh, adding today. So if you go into the search menu, there's this new menu item called Search Kit. And that's going to take you to this page here. I'll zoom in a little bit more here. Hopefully that helps. And it's going to take you to this uh, page called Search Kit. And uh, this is where you can manage saved searches. Uh, and Save Search is an entity that's been around in CBCRM for a long time, but it hasn't been used for much. So this extension takes advantage of it. So far, what it's been used for is smart groups. And this can do that and a lot more. So let's click on New Search. And the first thing we're going to do is pick the base entity. What is this search for? And as soon as we save the search, this will not be able to change. Um, if you've used Views in Drupal, it's similar to that. So we're in the Compose Search section. So let's just Let's just figure out what entities we want here. Let's, let's do contacts with their emails and also with their contributions. Okay. And we'll make both of those joins optional because some contacts don't have emails and some contacts don't have contributions. But we do want to start pulling in some fields for those. So if we run the search right now, we're just getting the contact ID and the name. Um, let's say that we don't care about the contact ID. We want the display name. We also want to pull in their email. There's so many fields in the database called email, but there's the actual one. Uh, so their email address. And let's, let's do a grouping here, which is to say that if they have more than one email address, let's not show lots and lots of rows. Let's show um, the emails combined. And so it's automatically going to aggregate the email field to list of emails. So now we've got contacts and their emails. Um, and we could pull in more contact fields. Um, we can pull in custom fields, but let's, let's just go with um, adding the other stuff that we were interested in, which is their contribution uh, total amount. And I think we can get the contribution date as well. Um, they received. Okay. So here we have the, and again, it's going to automatically aggregate those fields because we're grouping on the contact. Um, so like this contact, for example, has um, two contributions, one for 125, one for 50, and on two separate dates. Now, if we wanted to uh, do, for example, the uh, sum total, we could do it that way and get the total amount. And we could also do, say, the latest date received. So that could be useful. And we also might care about um, how much these people have donated. Maybe we're just trying to build a top donors list. So we can go into our um, so we could say contribution is required here and then we're going to get a much shorter list of people and we could also say now remember that this is an aggregate field this isn't one contribution amount this is all the contribution amounts um, and just to be clear um, let's pull in the contribution ID let's move it over here and let's say that this contribution ID uh, the way we're going to aggregate that is with count. Okay, so now we have uh, this person who has two contributions uh, for this amount on this latest received date. Uh, this person has four contributions and uh, quite a few email addresses as well. Okay, so from there we could also if you're familiar with SQL, we can do a WHERE clause or a HAVING clause. Having this filter is can filter the final result, and this final result, remember, has some aggregation in it. So we could say that we want the total amount um, to be greater than 100. And 
now we're going to have even more filtered down our list. So that's a pretty good search. It shows you some of the power of what this um, search builder can do, pulling in uh, a number of entities, uh, grouping them, aggregating them, filtering them. Uh, then we can say order by. Um, let's do top donors first. OK, great. So top donor is 2,700, and it goes down from there. So let's, let's say we, we're happy with that. We'll call our search the demo search, and we'll save it. OK. Now, what can we do with it, you might be asking, because we just created on this screen. We've got some results. Well, there's a number of things we can do. Right from this screen, there's something we can do which is that we can check these boxes and take some actions. I think we need a contact ID. Oh, I might have just hit a bug there. Um, So there's some discussion in the comments about how the fields are aggregated. Um, and yes, this is, this, is, this is run in real time um, every time. It's not, uh, it's not calculated and cached. OK. Let me show you creating displays. I'm going to skip actions for now and come back to it if I figure out what I did wrong there. Um, but just know that similar to advanced search, you can check the boxes next to each result and take some bulk actions on them. So I mentioned that safe searches are used for smart groups. And so we can do that. We can create a top to smart group. Um, and we want to go by the contact ID of the contact. If we were adding relationships here, then we might want to do a different contact column. Um, so, okay, we've got a smart group. And now we also have the option to add displays. And this is what I was just working on this morning. Um, I wanted for the demo to have more than one type of display because the idea is that this uh, search kit is pluggable and you would be able to um, add displays, um, say a graph or a chart or a calendar type display in other extensions, or maybe we'll add them to this extension. Uh, but let me just show you some examples of that. So a tabular display. is going to give you very similar results to what we saw before. Um, but it lets you tweak everything that you um, everything that you want and then save that display for your um, lesser privileged end users to use. So this this admin screen is for Civi Serum administrators. Um, but let's say that we want to simplify this table. We don't want to show the contact ID. We want to show the display name with a link to view the contact. Um, we want to show the emails and have a more user-friendly label for that. Um, just a few more. OK. So now we've got um, a more friendly display. Hmm. A couple columns missing. I'll have to figure out why that is. Not everything's perfect yet. This is beta. Um, you can use a pager, enable the actions. OK. I'm still going to figure out what's going on with those actions. 
uh, just to take a couple of questions here and pause. Um, so we've just created a search with pulling in a, nu a number of entities and aggregating some of those fields. We've created a smart group out of it and a display. I save that. Um, so for one question, yes, it's an extension. Um, it's a visible extension and it's shipped with core. Okay, a couple more things here. So let's add another display. Let's add a list display. Um, we'll just call it list. And we can pick the whether we want it to be an ordered list or an unordered list. We could do an ordered number list with uh, Roman numerals. And we can pick what fields we want and whether or not they have a label, whether or not they appear on a new line, whether or not they show up as a link. And we can do a quick preview of that. More new lines. So here's an alternate way to display your results. Instead of a table, you can do a list. Here's your top donors list. And we can say that we want to have a pager and just give, say, the top 10 results. Um, we'll do numbered like this. OK, so there's our top donors. Save that. Now, I want to show you some of the integration between this extension and um, this extension and the AFORM extension. And let me just take a question here. Is it fair to describe SearchKit as a new way to build safe searches, or is it bigger than that? Um, I would say that it's bigger than that, because safe searches thus far in CiviCRM have only been used for smart groups. And now we're using them for displays as well. Um, so you can, um, you can take these displays and, well, let me just show you a couple of things. So mm -hmm. let's go back to our search kit page. Okay. So it used to say no saved searches have been created. Now we have one that we've just made. It's called demo. It's for contacts. Um, and it's got a smart group. And it's got two displays that we've created. Um, can we add displays to normal smart groups? No, you would need to build the smart group using this method, using this type of search builder, because this is, these are smart, these save searches use API 4, whereas the old uh, smart groups, these smart groups in, in classic civic CRM are using advanced search or search builder. Okay. And so these displays, let me just show you, um, have each display that we've created has its own standalone landing page. Um, you can see in the URL, we're now not in CiviCRM admin search. We're in the regular CiviCRM area. Anybody with access to CiviCRM can view this page. You can give them this link. Um, and we're displaying, and it's just the name of the save search and the name of the display is the link. And it, it just took us right here. So you can um, add this link to the menu bar anywhere. Um, and any of your users who have permission to view these contacts will be able to view this display. Um, and use it, take the actions, page through it, um, follow the links that it creates to the contacts, um, like that. All right, back to SearchKit. So that's the first thing that creating a display does, is it creates a standalone page. And so here's the list view that we created. Okay. So these standalone pages, I imagine, can be useful for anybody that needs to view this. Um, and like I said, you can add links to it from wherever. You can add links from the menu bar um, or the user's home screen. Or, and let me work this up for you here. Um, let's go to um, 
let's go to forms. So, I think a lot of you have seen this demoed before. We have, I have a, another presentation demoing the form builder, so I'm not going to go through all of it here. But just know that form builder um, allows you to drag and drop forms and, and create the layouts that you want. I'm just going to show you how these two things can interact with each other. So here's a simple form that has a last name field, a gender ID field. Um, we can potentially add another field to it. Um, uh, say a first name field. Okay. Let's save this form. And what it's done is um, there's something missing in the UI which allows you to drop a search display into this form. I'm just going to do it quickly in code so that you can see the result because um, one thing that we want to work on in the very near future is adding that so that you can just drop your um, save search display into the app form. But let me show you the result. Um, Okay, so this is the form um, that we created with first name, last name, and gender ID field. And the save search display right below it, taking um, taking our form input as filters for Uh, whatever uh, filters we want to add onto the search. So that's the integration between uh, Form Builder and Search Builder. And Form Builder also is a layout composer. It lets you, you know, drag and drop not just fields around, but any other elements, including this search display. Um, question, can we use displays as blocks in Contact Summary Editor? Um, should be possible. Um, I'll, it, that integration hasn't been written yet, but I would think so. Um, but one thing you can use it in, and again, this is not um, completely uh, seamless yet in terms of drag and drop, but I'm just going to show you the potential here. There's a lot of UI that's been built, and there's a lot of there's some functionality that still doesn't have a UI behind it. Um, but if we go to um, I'm just going to do a quick um, demo of creating a dashboard that Includes um, our app form that we just built and saved. This form right here. I'm going to go back to my home screen. And if I typed everything right just now, there it is. So there is the search builder form that I just built while you were watching the app form that I just built and dropped the search builder form into it. And that has all culminated in a dashboard dashlet, um, which you can add to whatever users you want. And um, any, any kind of custom search that you want to build, you know, all of the power of that initial um, search builder with, uh, you know, with all of the joins and all of the fields that it can pull in um, all of the search fields that you can add through AFORM or any of the layout in elements you want to add through AFORM um, can all be composed into um, a page, a dashboard dashlet, and, you know, coming soon, potentially other things such as, um, uh, you know, such as layout editor. Um, this is a bootstrap theming issue here, but the pager does work.
um, and so do the links. So this is all, this, the reason that this dashboard looks a little bit different is because in the latest um, RC, um, or maybe even in master of CIVI CRM, I rewrote the dashboard so in Angular so that it could support these Angular-based dashlets. Um, and uh, as as you saw, it's still a work in progress in, in terms of getting the you know getting the UI to have all the buttons to make everything line up correctly. But um, most importantly, the functionality does work now. Um, and so just adding those UI buttons, I don't think it's going to be such a big deal. Um, this new dashboard is in the master branch of Civi Serum. So, um, let me just go back to Search Kit. Uh, is there anything else that somebody would like to see demoed here? That was my that was my like full pipeline between creating a search and uh, taking it all the way to creating a, a dashboard dashlet or a page for users. Uh, let me take a question here. Will there be a way to create and share with other custom searches and displays so we can have more off the shelf views without having to create them from scratch each time? That would be great. I think that's a good idea. Um, the custom searches. Um, are essentially just um, API parameters, and I, I showed you very briefly the um, the API Explorer, um, which is is very similar um, to Search Kit in in the underlying structure, um, and so these API params that you see in the URL bar or you see when we're um, building a new search, um, that's basically all it is. It's API parameters. Um, so those can be packaged up, however, you know, in in a text file um, and shared. Um, and so creating safe searches via code is definitely um, something we'd like to do. And another thing that we'd like to do um, is to is to start using these new technologies, the new search kit, the new app form, and using them to replace some core Civi CRM screens. So the new contact screen, for example, the find contact screen, those could be built using these, you know, builder tools and then shipped with Civi CRM. So, you know, build, build the flexible form and link to that form instead of the default search. And that way it's it basically ships as a default setting, but you can then go into this configuration UI and change it and modify um, the way that it looks for your Civi Serum instance. Um, Joe's question is maybe a demo of not in. Um, um, not in what? Let me give me a give me an example. I'll try it out. Um, somebody had asked if other base entities can be used, and actually, yes, literally, you can do a search. You can build a search for literally anything that, that that's exposed to the API. Oh, Joe, I was afraid you would ask that. Yeah, groups are still something that's a work in progress here because of the um, the joins to multiple um, multiple group tables. Um, I think I could try it with static groups, um, but smart groups are still something that are um, we have to deal with. Let's see, contacts where um, with uh, group contacts. So I think that's the kind of thing that we would do. Oh, whoops, I'm not saving it. I'm just trying to preview it. I, th I think that worked. So, so there's, 
the, the point is, is that there's a number of um, operators here. So when you're doing a where clause, you can also, oh, I didn't even show this off, but um, you can add nesting or you, so you can make some really complicated queries. Um, you can say where, you know, this group is not in this um, or, um, you know, the contact is whatever, uh, any, any kind of criteria. Um, Jamie asked, does Search Builder do anything that Search Kit can't do? Um, I think there might be a few hard-coded bells and whistles in Search Builder that Search Kit can't do yet, but certainly the goal is to replace Search Builder with this because this is going to quickly, I think, become much, much more powerful than Search Builder is. Um, there's probably a few things in Search Builder that, you know, like the group, um, you know, like, like searching within groups or maybe some hard-coded um, contribution functionality or things like that. But the goal is definitely to, uh, to do, you know, much more than feature parity um, with this new system. Happy to take any other questions. Is asking for nested booleans. Actually, gender is not a boolean. Maybe um, uh, I could do. There, there's there's all contacts who either are or are not deceased. <laughs> I don't I don't know what the uh, I don't know what the use is of that of that query, but it'll it'll work. Um, oh, nested ands and ors, yeah. Um, right, so when you, whenever you create a new group, and I think because I zoomed in so much, it's there. Sorry if it's that's hard to see, but um, when you uh, when you do a, a search for the where clause, you can add um, any kind of nesting. So you can say. Um, you can, I mean, you can keep going. You can and, or, and, or it gets really confusing, but you can. I'm not sure if this video is being recorded, but um, I can certainly record a demo and put it out on YouTube if this one isn't getting recorded. Um, so somebody asked about migration path. Um, you know, City Serum has is a is a pretty slowly evolving product, and so we don't tend to drop support for old technologies after we add new ones for quite a while. So I wouldn't worry just yet about um, about uh, Search Builder or Advanced Search being dropped, um, but. Uh, if they ever do get dropped, then yes, somebody would need to write the code to migrate them. Um, so Guy asked about using this new set, new set, new tool set to hard code some searches. I think that's similar to a question that was asked before um, about how to um, whether or not searches can be built like this and then packaged up? And the answer is yes, there is a way to do that. Um, so, in fact, uh, CiviSerum has a mechanism for that. It's called uh, managed entities. So, search, save searches are, are entities and we can, we can manage them. We can, you, can, you can create your favorite search using this UI and then save it and then, um, and then package it up in an extension and share it with other people and they can then install that extension, which will give them the search that you created, and they could then tweak it, um, share it again. So I think there's a lot of possibilities there. Um, but 
But yeah, Guy, in terms of putting it into core, I think so. I mean, we have all these hard-coded, hard-coded reports, right? Um, and so I think the line between searching and reporting is very much, um, you know, is very blurred now um, with this search kit. And so I think this is going to take over a lot of the reports. Oh, I did mean to show off actions. Um, so this is a list of actions you can take um, when searching for contacts. It's very similar to the list in advanced search um, with, the, um, with the difference that some of these actions are even available for non-contact searches. Um, so bulk update and bulk, bulk delete, those are just API actions that it's possible to do. Um, so you can delete contacts, you could um, update them or send them all an email, add them to a group, um, export them. Um, this, this goes back to the normal export wizard. Um, there's a question, will it integrate search tasks? Lots of extensions add search tasks. Um, so yes, depending on how that search task was created, um, because if the search task is, is compatible with having a standalone um, mode, then yes. Um, if the search task is not, then no. And what I mean by standalone is if the search task, um, a lot of the like quick form stuff for search task is, is, um, is coupled to uh, the quick form for advanced search or, um, or other searches. And so all of these tasks you see here, we've taken the work to decouple them and make them work standalone because this is obviously not um, a quick form. So they can't rely on any of the like, you know, any of the stuff that they were relying on. They just have to take a list of contact IDs and be able to do their thing. And so these are the ones that we've decoupled. And we actually did that for um, work on the new Civi Case UI. Um, so if your extension, um, if you can do the little tweak in your extension so that it'll take a list of contact IDs and not re require anything from the search form, um, then Yes. Um, question about searching in a date range. Um, uh, yes, so between is an operator. So is between or not between. However, I think um, the, yeah, we need to add a widget for this. Um, the alternative would be to add an or group. Um, so we could do birth date is greater than this and birth date is less than that. So that's one way to do it. It would be great to have a little, um, do a little UI thing for between. Um, so a few more, so I said that there were still some still a few pain points here, and one of them is uh, the more complicated joins onto things that uh, humans don't consider complicated, but are just complex because of the SQL. Um, so joining onto groups. Um, activities is actually one of those that's a little complicated. Um, so let's see. We can do a search for activities, and we can pull them up. Um, in terms of activity contacts, I think there's still one more piece of code to write there. It's definitely on the roadmap here for the near future um, to be able to pull in um, uh, the contacts who are related to the activity. Um, I think you can do it now, but it's a little clunky. Um, so I'm not going to I'm not going to demo the clunkiness, but know that. There are activities you can do. You can say that you want just activity type. You know, we want the activity type to be one of um, meeting or phone call or email. And that might turn up no results in my demo server. Um, but we can, we can definitely do that. We can do the activity date. Um, you know, when was the activity created? When was the activity done? Uh, we can also do the status 
uh, you know, any of these statuses. So um, yes, in, in short, yes, you can search on activities. Um, the activity contact thing is still something that I would like to deal with very soon. But uh, let me take another question here. Uh, so I think that's I think I think somebody's asking about being able to change activity status. So let's just let's just check here. Um, I think I'm getting no results from this, but let me just do a quick. I think my demo data isn't very um, good. But let's just okay. Yeah. So these all these activities are completed, but I I'm pretty sure that with these drop-down actions, update activities, let's change the status to scheduled. Uh, it worked. So yes, you can in bulk update activity statuses from the screen, and it works today. Um, so inline editing is not currently supported. Um, perhaps it could be. Um, the batch editing is supported. As I just demoed, we could take um, all of these activities and change all of their statuses um, or change any other field. We could change all of their activity type. I don't recommend that. Um, change all of their dates. Um, you know, change all of the uh, details or subject lines. Um, or we could change multiple things at once with this screen. Status and subject. Um, let's make the status canceled. Subject no go. Update them all. And we just did it. All those subjects, all those statuses are updated. So that's an example of the bulk features that actually works with just about anything in Search Builder. Um, the bulk update, as long as the current user has permission to do it, um, is really quite powerful. Uh, somebody asked if we can show the underlying API code or SQL code for a given search, and the answer is yes, it's right there in this little tab called Query Info. Uh, it'll tell you how long the query took, it'll tell you what API params were used, um, and what the resulting SQL was. Um, obviously the API params for this is pretty simple because I didn't put in anything, but uh, it, can get, it can get to be quite a lot. Thanks for the question, Alan. Uh, and yeah, this is this is very useful in debugging, um, and was useful for me to be able to look at what uh, what API params were generating what SQL exactly um, on the system. Cool. Well, I'm glad that somebody was recording this, and um, I hope you all can uh, try out Search Builder on the RC. Let me know how it goes. Um, file any bugs. We'll keep it moving forward. I really want this to be something that people find useful and stable and production ready um, very soon. And the more people we have, um, the more people we have trying it out, um, finding and fixing issues, the sooner we will have a stable release for this that uh, we can start to use to replace some of the core searches, so core dashboards, core reports. Uh, yes, we will definitely put this uh, recording online. Uh, there was another question about tags. Um, so tags are another one of those things. We're like working on some of the finicky join things. Um, but uh, just so you know, um, for the contact search, um, you can definitely um, pull up the contacts that you want to select and add or remove tags from them. 
um, in terms of uh, viewing their tags, I would say coming very soon. Yeah, we'll, we'll have tags coming on here really soon. Um, thanks for the thanks for the positive well wishes, everybody. Glad you could make it out. I'm glad we got such a good turnout for this. I think people are excited to see Civi Serum um, taking it up to the next level, and I am too. And um, let's see, a question about relationships. Um, relationships are on the to-do list. Let me see what. What was your question, Bruce? Okay. So relationships, the answer is currently it doesn't work. However, the reason that we created a new table in CV Serum called relationship cache is to make that kind of query easy enough for this search builder to do. So uh, it works in code now. We need to add it to this UI. but uh, And so that's something I want to do soon, um, to have it be so that you can do a search for contacts with any related contacts as well, and have that just um, smoothly work. So I'm excited that that's, I'm excited that, that a lot of that underlying work has been done, um, and that we're now in a place where um, it just needs to be added to the UI um, on an API level, it's already doable, and you can play with it in the API Explorer here, and have um, you know contact, you know search for contacts with um, uh, and pull in a join for other contacts using the um, oh the relation. Uh, almost works, the related contact thing. Okay, I need to do that today um, to make that available in this list. But anyway, there is, there's a lot of work being done there. It's, it's coming along really nicely. Sorry, I can't show it off right this second. All right, folks, um, I do want to plug the Mattermost channel for search improvements. Um, and let me just uh, let me just put that in the chat so you all can be sure to join that channel if you haven't already, um, because we are working on this every day. Um, right here. I uh, hope to see you there uh, trying this out and let me know. Uh, what still needs work and what's working well for you and um, you know within within the next few months I'm hoping to see some people able to use it in the real world and um, you know as I as I shared that dashlet uh, works quite well um, people can start building fancy searches and displaying them to their users on their dashboard or on pages um, so excited to see this take off All right, folks, I'm going to sign off. Everybody have a great day, and we'll see you on the chat.